So, structure, as you know, is a process of translation. Whenever you see the model, you have to translate it into forms and volumes. And our three important forms and shapes are, let me write down here, circle, square, and triangle. Well, we've talked about all of them in previous session, but here I want to talk more and explain in detail to you what are them and how, practically how we can use them. The second important thing are uh, volumes. We have three important volumes that are cylinder, cube, and sphere. So, when you want to add more structure to a drawing, after adding gesture and after uh, drawing gesture, you can add uh, shapes and volumes. And now I want to show you the process of doing that. Okay, now let's see how we can use all this structure and shapes in our drawings. I want to explain to you and give you some instruments or some ways to add more depth and structure to your drawings. They are overlaps, wrapping lines, and the economy of line. Economy of line has to do with the darkness of your lines, how much darkness you add to your marks that you put on paper. If you darken your lines, you're going to give more energy to them. Or if you leave them light, they would have less energy. So the dark lines have more energy and with using them you are focusing more on the specific part you're drawing. We will have uh, overlaps in situations like this when you want to show that a shape is overlapping or is in front of another shape like this. So in this situation you need to darken your lines like this the parts that are overlapping with the other shape. So we call this overlap. And then we have wrapping lines. And wrapping lines uh, try to show two things when you use them in your drawing. They show the movement of the volume in the space, like this, if I use different circles in different angles and directions. Now you can perceive the movement of all these shapes in the space. So drawing and painting, they are the art of space. You have to show the space and three-dimensionality. So that's why you're trying to use overlap, wrapping lines, and economy of line to give more depth to what we're doing, to our drawings. So now I want you to be more conscious of the choices that you make and you will be more conscious whenever you have the knowledge of that. So when you know all these ways, then you can choose which one is going to work for you better. So it's not necessary to use all of them at once or in one drawing. You can choose to use just overlaps or just economy of line. And you have to mix them all together. It's like design. As you remember, in design we have three important elements. They are line, mass and form. So you can mix them up, you can play with them, and then everything that you do has its own consequence. So be careful about it, and that's why we are learning drawing to gain this knowledge to learn what would be re the result of the thing that we are doing now. Okay, before getting started, here I want to tell you the process of drawing and adding structure. Let's see together here on this part. First of all, we have to draw the gesture, so the movement is really important. By drawing gesture, you're going to add more harmony to your drawings. And after that, you have to add the shapes for three important parts of the body that are head, rib cage, and pelvis. So I'm going to just write them down here. Head, rib cage, and pelvis. So you need to use ellipses, circles, like this. Imagine that you're drawing in a skeleton. It should be as simple as this drawing I'm doing here. 
So our three important parts of the body are head, ribcage, and this part, and pelvis. So it's important to understand the movement, the direction of these parts, and then to apply them into your drawings. Next part is adding wrapping lines. You have to add more wrapping lines and more shapes to your drawing and then you have to think about the connection of them. So this part is form and connection. So let's recap what we've been talking about, the process of adding structure to your drawings. As you can see, we've talked about gesture and then adding head, ribcage and pelvis. Next, you can add wrapping lines and also think about forms, the forms of these parts and then how to connect them together in order to create harmony and beauty in your drawings. Also, you can add other things that I've told you like overlaps, like economy of line, they will help you to clarify better your drawing and the statement that you want to try to say to the viewer. Okay, here I want to demonstrate you all the process that we've gone through and then let's see how it works in a practical way. As I told you, first you have to add gesture. So look for the movements for the directions of different parts of the body like head, ribcage and pelvis, they are really crucial. You can see the use of asymmetrical lines and curves in my drawing. They will create more movement and harmony. And after adding the weight bearing leg, here I add the supporting leg, which is here, always using curves. And they shouldn't be symmetrical because symmetry uh, will, as you can see, I'm just using curves and asymmetrical curves like this. Because if I use symmetry, as you can see here, there won't be any movement and the eye of the uh, viewer will be stuck here like this. So it won't go down or upward. So we, we, we are trying to not to use all these symmetrical forms and shapes because they will uh, make the eye of the viewer just stuck here in these parts and they won't be able to look at other parts of the drawing. So we are trying to create a kind of visual movement in our drawings and to make, it, make them more beautiful and engaging for the viewer. I'm more concentrated and focused on creating a whole, a harmonious whole. I'm not focusing on parts like head. So you can see I'm not trying to render anything here in this drawing. I, I'm just focusing on the movements, on general shapes. So this is the gesture part. First thing, gesture. Next, we have to add shapes to our drawings. And shapes, as you remember, are circle, square, and triangle. But the question is, for which part we have to add shapes? They are head, ribcage, and pelvis. These three important parts of the body. And, and now I will show you in a second how we can do them. So, we need a circle for head. Then an ellipse for ribcage. Look at the direction I'm using for it. It's not straight anymore like a normal way of standing in, like skeleton. I'm, I'm changing it like this. So you have to change the direction of the ribcage, pelvis, for example. You can change the direction of it. It shouldn't be always horizontal in order to create tension or if the body is twisted play with all these shapes to create new volumes and new movements okay as I see in the in the model here is the direction of the pelvis and it is the 
movement of the rib cage. So now I will darken them to make them more clear, like this. So this is head. Okay. So we we've done also the second part. Now the third part is to connect all these forms together. So this part would be the connection part. So let's see how we can add more connection to the drawing. We can use wrapping lines, overlaps, and economy of line. For example, look for the parts that we have a pinch like this. Because the weight, weight bearing leg is here, so we would have this pinch, this C curve, right here. And then the other part is relaxed, and then we have S curve, so it's stretched. You see I'm using lines for adding more connection to the drawing. After finishing torso, I will work more on legs. And finally, I will add details for arms. So now you see I'm adding more darkness to the lines because Whenever you darken your lines, you will get more clarity in your drawings. The question is where we have to darken them, and then now I'm going to explain all of them in a second. So let me write down here economy of line. We have different situations in which you have to darken your lines. You can choose to darken them. For example, if you want to show the weight of something, if you have a glass like this, and you want to show the weight of it, you can make this line darker. Or if something's closer to you, look at these different squares I'm drawing. Here you cannot really perceive the depth there is depth here, there is space, but it's not that much clear. When I add darkness to these squares that are closer to me, you will get the idea better and more clearly. So this will create depth. So as the form is closer to you, you have to make it darker. The other situation in which you can use uh, economy of line is overlaps. Whenever you have overlaps, you can darken your lines on parts that which the form overlaps with the other form, with the other shape like this. So you will have some something like a T on these parts. Okay. So now let's get back to our drawings. And now we can add all these details and ways of doing and adding depth to our drawing. On this part, as an example, we need to darken the line because of the pinch. We have a C curve. So I'm doing it now here. And then we have overlap on this part. Another one here. So you, you can see now how they help us to state our drawing, to show our drawing more clearly. Another overlap here. And this leg is closer to us, right? So that's why I'm making it darker. To give depth and space to, to my drawing. Like this. Besides all that, I'm using asymmetrical curves and that's why you can feel this uh, movement like this. Can you see that? So by using different curves you are creating this movement inside them and we call this life design because that's what gives life and movement to your drawing and to your forms.
Also, you can see the same thing in nature. Look at the trees, for example. They have these beautiful curves and movements in them. So the same thing happens there in the nature or in, in flowers. So we are applying all those ideas in the human body. It's not something different from them. It's not something separated. They are all connected to each other. So now you saw how we can add structure and forms together, how we can connect them. But still there's one thing that you have to learn and it is landmarks. Now I'm going to explain all of them in a second to you and then I'm going to also add those landmarks, those important bony parts of the body in order to connect all the parts together in a clear way. So here I did a quick drawing, so let's take a look at it here for landmarks and now I'm going to explain to you all of them, the things that are necessary to know for front view. First of all, let's learn together clavicle. Clavicle is the bony part that we have here on the rib cage, like this. It has this S curve to it, so it has three parts, like this. I'm gonna after that show you with uh, some examples, some images maybe, to clarify, to show you better all the landmarks. Then we have sternum on this part, it's quite important. And then at the end, we have xiphoid process on this part, on this point. Then we have costal cartilages, out of which we can just uh, feel and see maybe four of them, sometimes three. They are uh, number six, seven, eight, and nine. Usually we can see these uh, four ribs out of 12 ribs that we have for a rib cage and they are here so the form of that would be something like this I'm gonna just show you after that on our drawing and then on pelvis part we have anterior superior iliac spine these two points and then we have pubic bone pubic part right here and then on this part we have greater trochanter the bony part of the femur. So that was the important landmarks that you have to know for the front view. We have also scapula and other landmarks for pelvis in, uh, in the back view. But now let's just turn back to the drawing that I was doing here and let's finish it and after that I'm going to explain to you also the back view. So now let's add all the landmarks that I've explained to you on this drawing. On this part we have clavicle that's going upward like this. As I told you it's like S curve and then let's add the other part. And then we have sternum right here, costal cartilages. And then these bony landmarks of the pelvis that are anterior superior iliac spine. Then also we have iliac crest on this part. Let me just darken in them. Anterior superior iliac spine, pubic. And here we have the rib cage. And this line I'm drawing here is spine. As remember, spine is the most important part of the body because everything connects to the spine and all the movement of the body is uh, based on the movement of the spine. So it's quite important to at least understand its movement and the way it moves. So you, you shouldn't draw a straight line like this when you want to draw a human figure. Then it would be without, let's say, life, and it, and it seems that it's something uh, synthetic, you know, and it would be, wouldn't be anything alive. But when you uh, consider all those important points about spine, ribcage, landmarks, then your drawing uh, will be more, it, it will have more vitality in it, it would be more energetic, and then you can also add more beauty to your drawings. Okay, let's work on arms a bit. 
Now I can add more wrapping lines here, like this. And then here's the other part. You can see I'm not drawing contour lines, but if you draw contour lines without showing the position of each part and without showing the overlaps, like this, then you will just draw something without depth, without space. So you will draw the arm just in a flat way. It would get flat like this if you draw in this way. For example, if you draw just a contour line, your drawing will be get flat. So we want to avoid that. Here's the other part. I don't want to work too much on hand. Here's uh, the lower arm for which we can use an ellipse, a cylinder, and a cube at the end. So here I'm combining all these forms together and at last I will add wrapping lines to it. So that's how we can add structure to a drawing by adding wrapping lines, forms and more volume. Let's work on portrait a bit. Now I'm adding wrapping lines to show the movement of all these volumes in the space. Here we have a change in the direction of the lower legs and that's why I'm changing the direction of the wrapping line too. And then I don't want to make this darker because if I make it darker my drawing would get flat because then I'm going to create, let's say, a contradiction between, because this leg is closer, this one is farther, and as I told you, as the form is closer, you have to make it darker. But here, if I make the darker this line, this leg that's farther from us, then you're going to confuse your viewer. You're going to create tension in, in that situation. And we want to avoid that. So for this session, that's I think all that I wanted to talk about. I explained to you landmarks, forms and volumes. Next session, I'm going to talk more and in depth about the uh, volumes. I'm going to add cubes for uh, ribcage and pelvis. And after that, I'm going to also talk about how to combine the forms and volumes in order to create new ones. And then, uh, so I hope you enjoyed the session. If you have any question, please contact me and tell me and share with me your opinion and give me your feedback about the session. Thank you so much. See you in the next week.